This time on Sightseeing Spot Facts, we're taking a look at the Acropolis of Athens. Overlooking the Greek capital, the Acropolis is Greece's most visited sightseeing spot and one of the finest examples of Greek architecture. The word Acropolis comes from the Greek akros, meaning highest, and polis, meaning city, and so loosely translates as high city. The Acropolis sits on a limestone hill at a height of 150 meters and is the most well-known Acropolis of them all, as you can find these fortified hilltops in most city-states in Greece. In the era of the Mycenaean civilization, it emerged as a religious center devoted to Athena, the patron god of Athens. The entrance to the Acropolis was the Propylia, a gateway of monumental proportions in every sense of the word. Marble steps led up to towering Doric columns and huge wooden doors attached to a central gate building and two wings. Designed by architect Nesicles, it was almost completed before construction was interrupted by the turmoil of war. To the right side of the Propylia stands the Temple of Athena Nike, dedicated to Athena, goddess of wisdom and warfare, and Nike, goddess of victory in any discipline from war to art. The temple stands out with its more decorative columns made in the Ionic style, unlike the simpler Doric style. Originally, gilded bronze sculptures would have sat atop the temple, and a wall decorated in sculpture would have surrounded the temple. It's important to realize that the friezes, metopes, pediments, and statues would not have originally been left as the bare white marble we see today, but would have been decorated with various colors. After entering the Acropolis, you would have been greeted by Athena Promachus, a huge bronze statue created by sculptor Phaedus. Taking around nine years to make and towering 9.1 meters tall, reports say her helmet could be spotted by sailors coming over 50 kilometers away. For nearly 1,000 years, the statue overlooked the city of Athens. But around AD 465, the sculpture was taken to Constantinople as a trophy. Another important building is the Erechtheion. Named for the ancient king Erechtheus in Greek mythology, it was a temple complex which housed a wooden statue of Athena and much admired for its porch of the maidens. Six female figures were used in place of columns, which at one time did have arms, and were each carved from a single block of marble. You'll also see the sacred olive tree symbolizing Athena's gift to the people of Athens. The tree was chosen over Poseidon's spring of salty water in their mythical contest to become the god or goddess of the city. On the slope of the Acropolis sits a Roman stone theatre called Odeon of Herodes Atticus. Completed almost 1,900 years ago, it could seat 5,000 people and was used for music concerts. But it's just one of two theatres, as farther along the same slope is the Greek theatre of Dionysus, god of wine, fertility and theatre among other things. It's one of the most important theatres in Greece and is thought to be the birthplace of Greek drama. Built in the 5th century BC, at its peak it could seat an impressive 17,000 spectators. However, the crown jewel on the Acropolis was the Parthenon, a rectangular building with tall white columns made entirely out of marble and completed almost 2,500 years ago in the 5th century BC. 
But it wasn't the first Parthenon-style temple to have been built here, as an older Parthenon had been destroyed when the Persians attacked the Acropolis in 480 BC. After the Greco-Persian War drew to an end, the politician and general Pericles became the overseer of the rebuilding project and hired architects Ictinus and Callicrates and chief sculptor Phidias. Hundreds of people worked on the cutting and transportation of the marble from a quarry ten miles away, as well as the on-site building. It's also possible that the famous Socrates could have worked on it too, as his father was a stonemason, and Socrates also sculpted in his younger days. The Parthenon was built to worship the goddess Athena, where inside stood a giant 12-metre gold and ivory statue of her. It's said that even the gold plates on the statue of Athena could be removed if needed. The architectural brilliance of the Parthenon is that it appears perfectly straight and rectangular from a distance, but actually contains very few straight lines or right angles. The architects built it with a domed floor, inward leaning columns and many more slight refinements. These small differences overcome an optical illusion that makes vertical straight lines look slanted from a distance. The Parthenon is such a complex structure, deeply connected with Greek mythology and history, about which countless books have been written. And so hopefully this brief overview of just some of the structures here has piqued your interest in the ancient ruins of the Acropolis. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.